Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to the first episode of Who Won Wednesday. Ooh, generating toxicity in the internet wrestling community, I Larson. I don't think we will because we're fair. We're even-handed. We I try want to be nothing positive. but negative comments. No, at the end of the day, we wanted, we wanted to foster a creative environment where people could uh, have a, a forum to discuss wrestling in a positive atmosphere. I don't want any negativity in my community. Bollocks, man. Negativity inc- equals cash. No, actually, the reason we're doing it is because a couple people reached out to us and said, uh, hey, you know, I really enjoy NXT, but I'm not so much an AEW, and then vice versa. And they were like, so when you do the NXT review, you know, you, you reference AEW a lot and vice versa. Uh, and, you know, we kind of like to keep these things separate. Um, now, it's the Wednesday Night Wars. There's inevitably going to be a little bit of crossover. But I figure maybe if we do a segment each week, a shorter segment, where we can just say, hey, listen, here's who we thought won. And we can get that off our chest. And then we can do the recaps. Yeah, I mean, apart, without apart a lot from of instances where things were made and obvious. And, uh, if there's moves obvious, are obviously made to counter one show versus the other. Yeah. And then, yeah, that, that was worth mentioning on the actual recaps themselves. But if we're just going to do a general rundown of who we think won the day. Then I guess this is the place to do it. Look on your face. <laughs> All right, Larson, kick it off. Who do you think won this Wednesday night? I don't think anybody won. I think it was two really good shows. Uh, they each had their strengths. They each had their weaknesses. Um, I didn't feel like the the like AEW. I didn't think from top to bottom was as good as it was last week. Doesn't mean it was bad. I just didn't think it was as good. It didn't capture me uh, immediately like it did last week. Um, and I thought NXT did a lot of really good stuff. We saw the in-ring return of Tommaso Ciampa. I love that stuff when he was kicking uh, Garza's pants and hitting him with a knee. Some good character stuff. Hell of a main event between uh, Punishment Martinez and Pete Dunne. I know his name I'm is sorry, Damian what's his name? Priest. What's his name? Damian Priest. Thank you. But I like saying Punishment Martinez. a great name. Yeah. Um, I like how in NXT they're interweaving a bunch of stories in the women's division. Of course, all of them will hopefully eventually lead to matches against Shayna. Um and then the Undisputed Era stuff was good. Um, AEW had some good stuff. Darby Allen with the star making performance in the main event against Chris Jericho. Lucha Brothers putting on a fun match, maybe a bit long, but a fun match against uh, Jurassic Express. Marco Stunt being established as someone that you could take credibly in the ring against uh, larger opponents. Because he's clever. Clever. Um, there's a lot to like on both shows. I don't think it was a situation where, where one show you know, dramatically outpaced the other. Um, I still kind of getting used to the presentation of NXT, the camera stuff. Sometimes it's all right, but sometimes like this just feels like it's cheap. Um, Let me ask, okay, well here's what? Here, here's the bottom line on it. So I know you you want to give it to both shows. Let's say I came up to you and said, Larson, I've got two hours to live. I didn't watch anything Wednesday. Quick, what do I watch? Well, it depends what you want. What like <laughs> what you want those last? Two I'm hours. dying, man. I right, watch NXT this week. Nice. So there you go, NXT. I agree with you, Larson. I think NXT won. Here's how I feel about NXT from last night and AEW from last night. Uh, I thought that NXT, after the first couple of weeks of being live, trying to make a splash, doing everything they could to counter AEW, I kind of feel like they they fell back into a, they fell back into we're doing what we're going to do. We're going to continue with our stories. I thought that, uh, for example, last week with Walter versus Kushida. Walter's not even really on NXT. I know Imperium kind of is now. Yeah, but they have been the last three weeks. Yeah, but, you know, Walter is that's the UK championship. Take that back to NXT. As much as I like Walter, it felt like they were straying away from certain stories. Finn came back. I felt like NXT, this first two weeks of going head-to-head, it was like, this is the full breadth yeah. of NXT, including NXT UK. Yeah, I, yeah, like, I, I, like, I want them to focus on their stories, and I feel like they got back to that this week. Um, uh, like you said, Champa came back. I thought that he was terrific against Angel Garza, who, by the way, is also a star in the making. Oh man, Angel Garza is amazing. He's terrific. Any, I mean, do I could take Io Shirai every single week? I mm-hmm. think she's the best thing going right mm-hmm. now. Uh, you had the undisputed era with more shenanigans. Yes, showing number one how crafty they can be, and number two just how deadly they could be. Yes, I mean, evidently, when I first saw Velveteen Dream laying there, I was like, oh my god, they committed a murder. And William Regal, all he's going to do about it is put them in a War Games match. Yeah, no. Uh, so, yeah. So, and then, of course, obviously, there was a Keith Lee Dijakovic match, Dijakovic, whatever his name is, uh, which was terrific. Uh, like you said, the main event was terrific. I think NXT sort of got, and they did some like little interweaving stuff. So, when yeah. Pete Dunne came out, you had Killian Dane exactly. confront him. And that's what NXT is so good at. Yeah. Um, I thought AEW was a lot of fun once again. 
Um, the one thing, it's funny because you, you hammered this point home so hard last week. And I, to me, it's turned into kind of a weakness when he said they're not doing a lot of the talking stuff. They're just letting the stories play out in the ring, yeah. which in one instance last night I thought was very strong uh, where uh, Moxley turned on Pac and just left. I, I love that. I love I, it's It's very. It's like in WWE, you get DQ'd. What does it matter? Yeah. What does it matter? Yeah. Here's Pac. He's like, he's the one to get DQ because he cares about his win-loss record because he wants a title shot. I thought it was a strong plot that point. Great. No, yeah, I did. Great. I thought it was really good. However, that being said, man, when you pointed out that they're they're not really doing a lot of backstage stuff, they're not doing... What, like, where is a little video package on, like, Sadie Gibbs? Where's Nyla Rose? Where's Awesome Kong? They had one women's match last night. Granted, it was pretty decent. Uh, but I need to see these people. I need to see more of these people. You need to flesh out their characters while they're not in the ring as well. I think wrestling sort of, in order for you truly to connect with people, and if you're not watching Being the Elite, you kind of need that stuff on TV. I'm actually kind of surprised and maybe it's a contractual thing that they can't show stuff from being the elite on it. I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Uh, and they had that terrific thing on Cody Rhodes. Uh, uh, oh, that was great. Yeah, that was great. They are capable of producing really, really cool video packages. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see them take more advantage of that. And I thought last night was the first time when I saw it. And I was like, ah, we really kind of need that. I thought it was lacking. Maybe that. As, as, as they bring more <laughs> characters onto the show, mm -hmm. we'll get more of that because it'll be necessary. Mm hmm. By and large, the characters who are on a weekly basis now are relatively well established. Let's say they can't flush them out or take them in different directions. Um, but I understand your point. There's oh, there was a squash there, match last night at AEW. And there mm -mm. was a squash match. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm. I like these guys. The, the, what do they call the Silver Brothers or something like that? John Silver and something Reynolds. Okay. Silver Alex Reynolds. Reynolds. All right. Well, they were on SmackDown. Yeah, they were not on that long ago. product not that long ago. So good for them. They're getting some work. I mean, good for them. Yeah, but I was... It's, it's of course but, okay, but here's the just thing. Just the week though. after I say, oh, I don't think AW is gonna do squash matches. Yeah, but here's the thing, man. You cannot strip all those wrestling conventions away in terms of building character without having like okay, so they're not gonna have let's for example, let's say for example, Santana Ortiz beat up somebody backstage, mm -hmm. establishing that these guys are nasty and they're dominant. You have to show that somehow, and giving them a competitive match against somebody, I feel isn't effective as a squash match. I understand that. I understand <laughs> that. That being said, um, I mean, is there, there's put get a couple guys, get Brandon Cutler, have him get a partner. Yeah, but then Brandon Cutler's just going to be the squash match guy. But yeah, at some point, he's going to get a win that's going to surprise people. And, and on top of that, he's going to be competitive. You can't have him be competitive against two. The point of it here's is the thing. There's, here's the these thing. Guys, this is how they treat peons. Here's the thing. Badly. There's, there's uh, in my mind, a difference between a strip squash match where Santana Ortiz are entering, entering the ring against two guys who are not normal, regular, uh, full-time wrestlers for this company. You know the outcome. Mm -hmm. There's no drama involved. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get Brandon Cutler and somebody else, former team, it's like, okay, these guys are full-time wrestlers. At least there's a 2% in your mind. It's like, okay, maybe they'll do something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I understand that. I, I think that a squash match in this case, I thought it was fine. Um, it's not like we don't know who Santana Ortiz are, you know? Yeah, but here's the thing. So many people might not. You cannot take for granted that everybody watching, which is like a million people, yeah. know their backstory. That's why you have this match, because those hundreds of thousands of people who aren't watching Being Elite. Insane. Brandon Cutler and somebody else. How many of those people, are those 800,000 people that aren't watching Being the Elite? Uh, watched Impact. <laughs> well, I, mean, I never really watched Impact, but I know I know of their work and I know who they are. I know, but I think a lot of people don't. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there you go. That's who won NXT one for the week. Congratulations, NXT, for that. We're gonna send you out a wonderful prize. Uh, anybody really won? It was good. Both of them were good shows. I don't know. You you told me to. I'm dying. You watch NXT. That's what you told me. It seemed like maybe the more more essential of the two shows. All that stuff with with Mox and, and Omega was great. Yeah, it was really fun stuff. That's good stuff. Anyways, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Right now, right now, you can check out both those videos, uh, both our recaps for both uh -huh. NXT and AEW. Full recaps, you can check it out right here on YouTube, or you can hit us up in the audio land on any podcast app. Check that out right now. Thanks for watching. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.